the story about the wide mouthed frog. Who goes in this wide mouthed frog goes to practically every animal in the jungle and asks them what they like to eat. After imitating each of them in their response, Rob finally has the wide mouthed frog walk to the lion. The wide mouthed frog says, Mr. Lion, what do you like to eat? The lion roars back that he likes to eat all sorts of animals, but his favorite meal is the wide mouthed frog. To which Rob would purse his lips and respond as the frog, Ooh, is it too? <laughs> It's the sort of story. Marie McNeil and Robert McCall began skating together in 1973 at the Halifax Skating Club. In any competitive situation, people had their ups and their downs. Robert and Marie would keep each other training hard when one or the other of them was down by blackmailing each other with threats of telling secrets. In 1974, it must have worked. They won gold at the Eastern Canadian Novice Dance Championships. In 75, in their first national competition, they won silver in Novice Dance. In 76, they were Nova Scotia Junior Champions, came seventh at the Canadian Junior Dance Championships. By 77, they were again Provincial Junior. championships and came 13th in the Worlds. In 1981, before a hometown crowd of some 8,000 excited fellow Nova Scotians at the Halifax Metro Center, they became Canadian senior dance champions and finished 13th again at the Worlds. Three times during his skating with Marie, the world had thought Rob wouldn't be able to, to, to make the competition. Once his car was demolished and he was bruised but still skated. Once he was coming off a broken leg with the rehabilitation took a much shorter period than everyone expected. And once he had scarlet fever, shortly before they were to take off from Moscow. In all three instances, Rob assured everyone involved that he'd be there when necessary, and in all three instances, he was. Shortly after the Worlds of 1981, Marie McNeil announced her retirement. Robert McCall soon teamed up with Tracy Wilson of Port Moody, BC. Everyone told him they shouldn't skate together because there wasn't enough discrepancy in their heights. Rob assured Tracy that he'd wear elevator soles in his skates and it would look fine. Tracy agreed to the pairing. in the World Championships and they won silver medals in Skate Canada. In 83, also the year they were Canadian champions again and came sixth in the World Championships. In 85, they were Canadian champions again and in the World Championships in Japan, they came fourth. In 1986, they were gold medalists at the St. Ivo Invitational. They were Canadian champions. They won the Canadians. They won gold in Skate Canada. They won bronze medals in the Worlds in Cincinnati. In 1988, they won bronze in the Worlds in Budapest, and then there was the Olympic competition to be skated in Calgary. When Tracy Wilson and Rob McCall brought the home crowd to their feet over their bronze medal performance, they became the first Canadians in history to ever win an Olympic medal in ice dancing. Rob's 1988 finished when he received the Canada Medal and was named to the Order of Canada. This, this didn't, however, end the skating career of Wilson and McCall. They went on to a worldwide amateur tour and then turned professional. In December of 1989, they entered the World Professional Ice Skating Championships and placed first, ending their competitive careers at the top, winning the long-sought World Championship gold medals. A childhood skating partner of Rob's, Jennifer Henderson, tells a story of Rob at a Canada Games team party 
in which he dressed like an ogre during a pretend seance and terrified his, his fellow skaters to the tune of the monster match. In fact, one of the kids ran out of the house and the neighbors reported that there was a bunch of unruly kids that were being un uncontrolled. The Wilson McCall World Championship routine was based on the Phantom of the Opera, venting at long last Rob's interest in the eerie and the calm. Rob died of an AIDS-related problem on November 15, 1991, at 33 years of age. He had suffered quietly through the illness, not because he was ashamed, but for the very practical reason that the U.S. authorities wouldn't allow HIV-infected non-citizens across the border. He did, however, work tirelessly while always striving to keep up the spirits of loved ones around him, to bring together a benefit for those who, could, who would contract the disease after he was gone. The idea came to fruition when Tracy Wilson and fellow Olympian Brian Arcer co-chaired Skate the Dream, a tribute to Rob McCall, which brought together more skating talent than had ever been gathered before at Olympic Games or at World Championships or anywhere. The benefit held first in November 1992 honored the memory of Rob McCall. The event featured such stars as former Olympic gold medal winners Katarina Witt, Scott Hamilton, Brian Boitano, and Christy Yamaguchi, as well as Brian Orser and three-time world champion Kurt Browning. By the end of the night, they had raised some $500,000 for AIDS research at the Toronto Hospital. Since that time, the total has risen to over $2 million. The show of support was also an emotional balm for Rob's mother, Evelyn, who you see up here on stage. She's here to receive this induction. For the performers themselves, the benefit was the beginning of recognition that AIDS had hit skating hard and that the stricken need their help and understanding. We wanted to show, said Katarina Witt, that because someone is HIV positive, you can't put them aside. They're part of us, she said. We're a community. The $2 million is now going toward amalgamating the Toronto Hospital and Toronto Western HIV units to do research and provide care in ways that were never before possible. A local group called the Rob McCall Foundation for HIV Research is also underway and plans for a Canada-wide Rob McCall Skatathon is in the works. Please permit me to repeat one final story before we close this induction because it will describe Rob McCall to those of you who didn't have the pleasure of meeting him. Better than a hundred speeches like this one. In 1988, the grade six kids at Shannon Park Elementary School in Dartmouth were doing a unit on how to prepare for a big event. They wrote letters to Rob, their father. He would visit them and talk to them about it. Rob McCall had to turn down an important invitation to fly home to those kids but he was there with those kids on the 25th of June. The invitation he turned down was to have lunch with Prime Minister Brian Mulroney. <laughs> we wonder how many other Canadians would have made that choice. <laughs> to be skated in Robbie's memory. Hopefully you'll all be there contributing to the wonderful causes here espoused. Tonight we pay tribute in another way by inducting to the Nova Scotia Sport Heritage Center Hall of Fame, eight times a Canadian champion, the first Canadian in the history of the Olympic ice dancing competition to ever win a medal, a world champion, a Dartmouthian in Nova Scotian we're all very proud to call our own. And I want to repeat one other story. Brian Orser called me. He said the one thing he wanted to mention in this talk, he wanted me to, to tell you, is that Rob McCall was very, very proud to be Nova Scotian. He was very, very proud to be from Dartmouth. And whenever he asked where he was from, according to Brian Orser, he put on a heavy Eastern accent. The Eastern accent didn't leave him the rest of the night. Of course, we all know we don't have Eastern accents. We have Eastern Nova Scotia. By far, ladies and gentlemen, the most successful skater to ever come out of the Maritimes. Mr. Robert McCall.
and Marie used to write poems to each other when they were skating together. Marie wrote a poem uh, that she read at Rob's funeral. We've asked her to come up tonight and read that poem for us. Marie? Ladies and gentlemen, Marie McNeil Bonus. As Sandy mentioned, uh, Rob and I wrote a lot of poetry together in very light humor, but we had a, good, a lot of good laughs over it. When Rob passed away just two years ago, I thought it was most appropriate that I wrote a poem for him which I did read at the funeral, funeral, and that's the poem I'd like to share with all of you this evening. To Bobby, is this world fair? A question we've all asked, as we remember the good times and the bad times of the past. Rod McCall holds a spot in the hearts of all of us here, whether it's sharing his friendship or admiring his career. As an athlete, he was phenomenal. He exceeded his goals by far. He enjoyed his tremendous achievements and fulfilled his dream to become a star. As an artist, he was creative to a level so many admired. The elite in his sport, choreographing programs and shows, chose Rob McCall to be hired. As an entertainer, he brought joy and laughter to audiences' hearts. There's no question to be a performer is where his love for skating did start. As a person, Rob was loving, a heart that was made of gold, a sense of humor that brought tears of laughter, a sincere warmth shown to both young and old. To be faced with a tragic illness, with a cure made of only faith and hope, it is hard for any of us to imagine how one must learn to cope. The courage and strength shown by Rob during the past two years are, in my eyes, his qualities that stand out by all his peers. He was fighting a losing battle and was optimistic to the bitter end. His attitude was incredible, which was hard to watch as a friend. The good Lord chose this time to take Rob's soul up above. For what reason, there is no answer, as we grieve the man we love. Rob wanted to be remembered as someone who contributed to mankind. Well, he certainly did, and to the highest degree, there is no question in my mind. As we gather today and pay our respects and pray to the Lord for Rob's soul, we must remember Rob's words as he faced his last days. Like very few in my lifetime, I have achieved my goal. Rob, you've left us great memories. As we gather to say goodbye, the world will surely miss you, and Bobby, so will I. And if I could add one more verse to that this evening, because I know that he's in this room tonight. Rob, we know you're up there, because you know there's a party when you hear your name. And I also know you're doing a dance, because you're ecstatic to be inducted in the Nova Scotia Sport Hall of Fame. <laughs> In the beginning, it was Bobby and Marie. In the hearts of Nova Scotians, it'll always be Bobby and Marie, won't it? And it was quite fitting, more than fitting, Evelyn, that uh, Marie, his partner of so many years, and herself, a sure bar candidate for future Hall of Fame consideration, should make that presentation to you tonight. It was wonderful, thank you. I want to thank everybody for their support through Rob's career and his life. And of course, um, I have to give a big bouquet to Tracy and, uh, and Marie for uh, sharing their talent and their skills. And I just want to support our, our family and our friends and um, the Sports Heritage Centre. And uh, Heather Harris for nominating. 
And uh, it's been a wonderful evening. Thank you very much. 33 years is much too short. And yet there were 33 brilliant years that you look back on with great pride and affection and satisfaction because he achieved so much in such a short period of time. I'm very proud of Rob, and I know that he'd be very proud this evening because he's very proud of his Nova Scotia roots and his heritage. And wherever he went, wherever he competed, he always took Nova Scotia and Nova Scotians with him in his heart. Thank you, people. Thank you. Thank you, Evelyn. Have a good call.